Welcome to Madame Ravens. This way to the library. She's been expecting you. Skinwalkers, The Beginning by Raldo GTM Note, Dene is the name the Navajo give themselves. To understand the Skinwalkers, first you must know the origins. The Dene creation story describes how in each world there were people, animals, insects, and monsters. In each world something had happened and they had to leave to the next world. You can Google the creation story and read it for yourself. This information that I am writing was given to me by a Diné elder, knowledgeable in Diné culture, history, and stories. He told me that when the Diné came into this world, the final world, we were at a disadvantage. The other creatures on this world did not care about the Diné. It was the animals that cared enough to make sure the Diné could adapt to this world. The animals talked to the Diné and were amazed about how weak, fragile, and slow the Diné were. It was then when the animals taught the Diné how to harness the animals' abilities. It was meant to be used to help them get through the harsh realities of life. Gaining this ability gave the Diné the ability to travel great distances and become dominant species of this world. The Diné had changed. They were no longer in harmony with this world. The creatures of this world had decided to cut relations with the Diné. Over the years, the Diné had slowly started to lose the ability to harness the animal's ability. There were a few Diné that knew and recognized that they were losing their accumulated knowledge and decided to record them on sandstone cliffs. These records are now recognized as petroglyphs to the unknowing eye, but only a very, very few Diné are capable of deciphering these writings. The creation stories, ceremonies, stories, and history is recorded in sacred sites on the reservation There was also Diné that started to practice witchcraft and twisted the animals' abilities. They abused their powers and used it for their own personal gain. These individuals knew they needed to save their knowledge and had also scribed their records on sandstone cliffs. Diné witchcraft practitioners despised the Diné culture and did everything opposite. This included building their hogans with doors facing the west and violating everything that was sacred to the Diné. They scribed their teachings on the opposite side of where the Diné elders scribed their teaching. The place where they etch their evil is in a canyon, which is marked with an evil face etched on a rock to the entrance of the canyon. I didn't believe this so, I went to find the location and I came across a face that was etched into a rock. This image gave me chills and I felt like I was being watched and I felt scared. I didn't feel safe and felt unwelcome. I didn't even try to enter the canyon. It wasn't worth putting myself in that much danger. I can see the rock when I close my eyes and remember exactly how I felt. I won't go there again. This canyon contains the rituals, curses, ceremonies, and teachings of Diné witchcraft. They have found a way to harness the animals' abilities. My source tells me that the animals gave the Diné abilities without taking a life or doing anything that would disrupt harmony. These witches have defiled the twisted, the ancient art of harnessing the animal's abilities. Hardcore witchcraft practitioners have elevated the art of skinwalking, and now only a very few that meet together and form a coven. This coven uses witchcraft 
to skinwalk, and they are almost unstoppable. Cannot be hurt by conventional means. The single skinwalking practitioner is the weaker of the two. These people harness the abilities of the animals by using its skin. They generally look like a person wearing an animal's hide and are the most commonly seen. The majority of skinwalkers are single practitioners, and it is rare to see a coven skinwalker. Skinwalker That Wanted a Ride by Raldo GTM Back when I graduated from high school, I got a job in the oil field. I used to be a parts chaser, and I got parts for the shop and field mechanics. I would often deliver parts to the field and stick around to help the mechanic. Dale had called and requested parts delivered to a remote location near the Navajo Nation border. I got the parts gathered up and took the parts to Dale. It was getting late and I wanted to just drop off the parts and go, but Dale asked me to stick around and we'll leave together. I was just joking around and asked if he was scared. He answered yes, and he told me this story. Dale had turned onto the dirt single track road to the location. He drove to the compressor site. He had heard all the skinwalker stories and didn't pay much attention to them. He stayed late on the job. He wanted to get it done so he wouldn't have to come back. When he finished his job, he left the site and drove back on the same road he came in on. While driving down that dirt road, he came across a log that was dragged into the middle of the road. He drove up to the log and got out of his truck and dragged the log out of the way. He was puzzled because it wasn't like that before. He continued to travel on the road until he came to a main highway. He turned onto the highway and started to gain speed, and that's when he noticed the truck swayed. He said it was like a load had shifted, and he felt it. He looked in his rearview mirror and didn't see anything out of the ordinary. Then it happened again. This time he turned on his truck bed lights, and that's when he'd seen something in his truck bed. He described it as being the size of a man and having gray fur covering its body. It stood up, and it jumped out of his moving truck at about 70 miles per hour. It ran off to the passenger side of the truck and easily jumped over the fence and continued to run away. Dale said that it had scared him, and he could not sleep for weeks and was afraid of working out in the field when it got dark. I stayed with Dale and we both left together, and we didn't see anything that evening. So quoth this raven. If you like this, please hit the little button to let me know. If you didn't, hit the little button to let me know. Leave a comment. I'm always glad to talk with you, my darlings. I'm open to suggestions and criticisms, critiques. If you have not subscribed, please do so and ring the little bell so you know when to come up and see me. And I will talk to you next time, my darlings. <laughs> Farewell. <laughs>